in the center of these supermassive black holes. Yeah. If you could go through that, there would be another universe. Joe Rogan has taken the plunge to reveal the craziest facts about black holes. He had invited some seasoned scientists over for his shows that have revealed black hole reality. Join us in this video as we delve into what black holes really are and how Joe Rogan revealed that we could possibly live inside a black hole. When you hear the name black hole, what comes to mind? A colorless, barren entity that's lurking somewhere in space, right? But as conventional scientists say, a black hole is anything but empty space. Think of it as a star, a star that is 10 times bigger than the sun squeezed into a sphere equivalent to the diameter of New York City. Black holes are regions of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape from them. Every object that comes near its event horizon falls into it and never waves back. Whether it's light, an electromagnetic field, or a specimen, nothing can escape its event horizon. According to conventional approaches, black holes are colossal entities that were only formed when massive stars exhausted their nuclear fuel and collapsed upon themselves. But what physicist Brian Greene has explained in Joe Rogan's podcast is the complete opposite. He busted some major myths about black holes. But the reality is anything, if you compress it enough, becomes a black hole. If you take an orange and you squash an orange down sufficiently small, according to Einstein, it becomes a black hole. Greene also explained the vigorous gravitational pull of black holes. Many people believe that black holes are sort of engulfers that reach out to objects and suck everything in. Green said, Many people have in mind that black holes sort of reach out and grab everything in. Yeah. But a black hole of mass M, a black hole whose mass is the same as the sun, has the same gravitational pull as the sun. It's mm. not, it doesn't pull any harder than the sun. It's just that you can get closer to it because it's so small and therefore you can experience the gravity more strongly. But, you know, a brick of mass M and a black hole of mass M, they exert the same gravitational pull. When we are talking about black holes, we must not forget about their aspects, like the event horizon and singularity. Do these black holes carry baby universes inside them? And what's their relation to the Big Bang Theory and the multiverse? The event horizon is a black hole's boundary, where the gravitational pull of the black hole becomes so strong that nothing can escape from it. Once an object is trapped in its pull, it will reach the black hole's singularity in just a second. However, according to Einstein's theory of special relativity, humanity can never receive a signal from inside the event horizon. So what happens once the object falls into the black hole is never revealed. Avi Loeb, from the astronomy department of Harvard University, said, The event horizon is the ultimate prison wall. One can get in, but never get out. Event horizons act as cosmic gatekeepers that protect objects from directly observing the underlying secrets of black holes. Yet they can reveal a lot about the environment around them. Although nobody has ever seen the inside or the other end of a black hole, scientists call it a singularity. It's a point where density goes infinite and no mathematical equation works. The normal expectation is that you have a place, like in the middle of the Oppenheimer Snyder dust cloud, the, a point there where the density becomes infinite and so the curvature of space-time becomes infinite. So you have a place where the equations run away and they go to infinity. When talking about singularity, scientists say that something has gone wrong, but in reality humans can never compute infinity. So is the idea of a multi-universe. It started out with Stephen Hawking, who said, every time we create a black hole in our universe, we may make a baby universe that is only observable from the inside of the event horizon of the black hole. Physicist Brian Greene has also shed some light on the idea of the multiverse, which ultimately strengthens the notion that we live inside a black hole. But how is it possible that we are living inside a black hole? From the beginning of time, humanity has always had this one question. Where did all this come from? After countless trials and errors, scientists of the 20th century have finally come to the conclusion that our universe is the result of an explosion that took place around 13.7 billion years ago. From the Big Bang explosion until now, the universe has been continuously expanding. The distant galaxies have far more stars than we have ever imagined, and everything within them is changing. 
But what existed before the Big Bang? Conventional scientists claim that it was the beginning. But in reality, there was something else that initiated the Big Bang. It was the seed of origin, where all the mass and energy of the incipient universe were compacted into an incredibly dense speck. This speck was trillions of times smaller than any observable particle. So how was such a god particle created in the first place? Well, according to Nikodem Poplowski from the University of New Haven, the seed of the universe was forged inside the most extreme environment of a black hole. Poplowski stated that our entire universe could exist inside a black hole that in turn is part of another universe. The notion of the universe being a part of a black hole somehow supports the phenomenon of the multiverse. Because scientists believe that there are enormous black holes in space, so there should be multiple universes like ours or a little different than ours. And according to inflationary cosmology, our universe was not the only seed that inflated. If we head over to Joe Rogan's podcast with Brian Greene, he explains this phenomenon as follows. That it's quite likely that this explosive inflation of the region that we currently inhabit, it was just one of many such events. And therefore, there are other far-flung regions throughout this larger cosmological landscape where things have also inflated, but the details can be different. The physical details can differ. Sir Roger Penrose also denies the fact that the Big Bang was the beginning of the universe, stating that. So I'm saying our eon began with the Big Bang, ended up with this exponential expansion. There was another one before us. There will be another one after us. There was another one before that, and so on. All these statements take us to a point where we can believe that the cosmology of black holes is somewhat true. It's a cosmological model which states that all the space-based matter that we can observe in the universe is the interior of a black hole that we live in. Such a cosmological model requires that the Hubble radius of the observable universe should be equal to its Schwarzschild radius, that is, the product of its mass and the Schwarzschild proportionality constant. In the case of a black hole, it seems to be nearly true. This mode is also supported by Einstein's theory of general relativity. And Nikodem Poplowski, who is a great supporter of the living inside a black hole notion, states that if we follow the Einstein-Carton theory of gravity, every black hole creates a new baby universe inside and becomes an Einstein-Rosen bridge or wormhole that connects this universe to the parent universe in which the black hole exists. All these statements from scientists and physicists convey that there exists a deep connection between black holes and the birth of the universe that we live in. It's possible that every black hole that's created in our universe gives birth to another baby universe, which is only visible inside the event horizon. Until we speculate on factual theories from physicists and astrophysicists, everything would seem like just a speculative hypothesis, which requires lots and lots of work.